Hudson. For generations, the river and its lady have welcomed visitors to the hustle and bustle that is New York. The city's fast-paced, upbeat lifestyle is mirrored in its football giants. So far in 86, the team has proved itself strong, combative, and just a little bit lucky. South, life on the Mississippi just floats along. In New Orleans, the rush is not so urgent. But lately, they've been playing the blues. The oil business is as depressed as the unemployment lines are long. And once again, the Saints are hobbling. It seems both the team and the town are trying to regroup and turn things around. So today, from the banks of the Hudson River, the New York Giants try to make it three in a row against the New Orleans Saints. Giant Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey, as the New Orleans Saints, one and two on the year, take on the New York Giants, who have won two and lost only one. An ideal day for football, 62 degrees. It is not humid, partly cloudy skies on the artificial surface. And good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dick Stockton. The Giants are coming off two impressive victories against AFC West opponents. Their defense has been magnificent. But in the past, they have stumbled against teams that they should beat on paper. Today is one of those teams, the Saints, and so that's the test for the Giants today. My partner of course is Dan Deardorff and the big story for the Giants is that running back Joe Morris will not play today. He not only won't play Dick, Joe Morris is not even at the stadium today. He was told by club officials stay home. We'll get into his disorder as the game goes on. Starting in his place is going to be Lee Roussan, a second year player. Most of last year on injured reserve but he started and played well during the preseason. Bill Parcells really likes him. Now, the Saints head coach is Jim Mora, who won a couple of championships in the USFL. What is he thinking now after three games? Well, the first thing that uh, Jim Mora said when he got to New Orleans is, this is clearly a better club than I had with Philadelphia and Baltimore over in the United States Football League. But what he's coming to find out is the harsh reality that in comparison to the other NFL teams, the Saints are way behind talent-wise. That club is struggling right now. He's made some lineup changes. And Jim Mora struggling to find an identity right now with the New Orleans Saints. Hopefully, though, from New Orleans standpoint, the loss of Joe Morris might bring the Giants down a notch toward their level. The Giants have won the toss, and they'll receive, and Morton Anderson will be kicking off for New Orleans, and deep for the Giants, Mark Collins and Solomon Miller. Miller is on the left, Collins on the right. Over the years, it's been close between these teams, with the Giants having won 6 of 11. And we're underway at Giants Stadium, and Anderson's kick sails deep into the end zone. A touchback, and the Giants will start out first and ten. And Phil Simms, the quarterback for the Giants, and he'll be facing a New Orleans defense with a 3-4 front. Bruce Clark, Tony Elliott, and Jim Wilkes up front. The linebackers, Ricky Jackson and James Hayes outside, and newcomers Sam Mills and Alvin Tolles, who did not start the regular season, are the inside linebackers. And the secondary, Waymer, Cole, Gibson, starting in place of Russell Gary at strong safety, Frank Watlett, the free safety. First and ten, getting a chance on the first play of the game is Maurice Parthen, who has not carried the ball all that much so far this year. Tolles making the tackle. The rest of the offense for the New York Giants, Roussan and Carthen who carried. Bobby Johnson and Lionel Manuel are the wide receivers. Mark Bavaro, very popular tight end. Benson, Ard, Oates, Godfrey, and Nelson, the offensive line. Second down and seven at the 23. the 21-yard line and ended up losing on the play. It was Ricky Jackson and Sam Mills, a couple of linebackers on the stop. And I guess the question here, Dick, is from the New York Giants standpoint offensively, what effect is the big play ability of Joe Morris going to have, the loss of Joe Morris? He was able to take a screen pass like that, maybe break a couple tackles. We'll have to find out if Carthen and Roussan are capable of that type of big play. So it's third down and eight at the 22, and Solomon Miller comes out wide to the left. Tony Galbraith in the game as a third down receiver. Sims out of the 
the shotgun. Gets rid of it and throws it out of bounds. Solomon Miller was the intended receiver, and it was Johnny Poe covering on the play. So the Saints do well on the first series defensively. And the Saints have given up an incredible amount of yardage, 420 yards a game to be precise. So I think the New York Giants, this is the type of team that they'd like to get on top of early. They don't want to give the Saints any room, and right now they'll get good field position. Elvin Edwards is back for the Saints, and Sean Landetta, who had a big day against the Raiders last week, will kick from inside his 10-yard line. Short kick. Bounces at the 45, and it might have been touched by Kelvin Edwards. He picks it up, and he's brought down by around five Giants, just shy of the 40 by Gary Reason. It's a 42-yard punt. And the Saints will have good field position. Dave Wilson is the quarterback facing George Martin, Jim Bird, and Leonard Marshall up front. And an outstanding group of linebackers, Carl Banks, Gary Reasons, Harry Carson, and Lawrence Taylor. And in the secondary, rookie Mark Collins starts for Elvis Patterson. Harry Williams, the other cornerback, Kenny Hill, and Terry Kennard, the safeties. First and 10 for the Saints on the 39-yard line. They have struggled so far this year was against Green Bay. Dave Wilson, the quarterback. Fumble. And he covered up in a hurry. That's not the way you want to start, is it? Jim Moore has got to be saying, come on, guys, we got what we wanted initially. Good field position. Now capitalize. The rest of the offense behind Wilson, Dalton Hilliard, a rookie, and Buford Jordan, the fullback, Eugene Goodlow and Eric Martin, the receivers. Bill Kantz, who was just signed this week, starts at left tackle. Brad Edelman, Steve Court, Ralph Williams, and Stan Brock, the rest of the offensive line. Colby Brenner's the tight end, and there is Jim Mora. Came over from successful USFL team. Second and 12 now at the 37. Dalton Hilliard. Leading rusher, and the second-round pick out of LSU had no chance. And the giant defense led by Gary Reasons and Carl Banks made the stop. It's a New Orleans Saint offensive ball club that is really not big play oriented. A lot of youngsters in the key positions, especially backfield-wise with Jordan and Hilliard. I think maybe it's going to be a feeling-out process for New Orleans the first couple of series. It's third and 11 at the 38-yard line. Eric Dorsey, number 77, is in for the Giants as a fourth defensive rushman. Wilson going for Eric Martin, who's got it in Giant territory. And Eric Martin's going to go all the way and score to give the Saints a lead. 63 yards. Wilson to Eric Martin. Well, wouldn't you know, the minute I say they're not big play oriented, they get a gift from the Giants, a couple missed tackles. Dave Wilson got some pressure, but it was too late. He stands, sets his feet, and Eric Martin, who's working on Terry Kennard, Kennard, no idea the ball was in the air. When you've got your back to the quarterback, you're asking for trouble. Kenny Hill too late. And Eric Martin just strolls to the end zone. He had caught an 84-yard pass earlier this year. He is their big play receiver, and it's 6 to nothing. Morton Anderson with Brian Hansen, the team's punter holding. And the Saints lead it 7 to nothing with three minutes gone by in the opening quarter. Eric Martin, that time with the touchdown pass, lines up right here in the slot. He just got one-on-one -on -one with Terry Kennard. Kennard falls behind early. Very simple. It doesn't get much simpler than that. Kenny Hill's going to come in, though, and take Kennard off the play. But Terry Kennard, really poor coverage, and Eric Martin, an easy touchdown. So Eric Martin in his second year out of LSU. And there is Morton Anderson, deep for the Giants. Solomon Miller and Mark Collins, a couple of rookies. Three minutes gone by in the first quarter and a 63-yard touchdown pass from Dave Wilson to Eric Martin, and the Saints lead it. This will go to Collins, two yards in the end zone. And Collins is slammed down at the 15-yard line by Vaughn Johnson. So the Saints have to be pumped up after their 
first score of the game, and Phil Simms will try to regroup for the Giants. It would appear that someone forgot to tell New Orleans that they're the underdogs in this game. How many times do you see it? You're told you can't win, so you come out and you play like a team possessed. And again, we can't overemphasize the fact that the Giants have had their problems against teams they should beat after rising to the occasion earlier. First and ten at the 50. Roussan carries for the first time today. And a fine play made by Sam Mills, who's only 5'9", an inside linebacker. And a loss on the play. Mills just starting this week for the Saints for the first time. Glenn Red was demoted by head coach Jim Moore. And Mills and Tolles have to be the two shortest inside linebackers in the game. Mills at only 5'9". Alvin Tolles, his counterpart at 6'1". 5'9", 225. That's extremely small. Gibson and Mills both starting and both played for Jim Moore in the USFL. Loss of one on the play, second and 11 at the 14-yard line. Sims on the five, completes it to Bavaro. And Bavaro, who can carry many players on his shoulders, gets it out close to a first down beyond the 25. Johnny Poe making the tackle a gain of 12. What Bavaro does better than most tight ends in this game is his ability to get positive yardage after making the catch. You see him come across, and he's going to be made contact with by Poe with at least three yards to go for the first down. But look at his ability to keep fighting forward, just getting across the first down marker. Came into the game in a four-way tie with three other 49ers for the NFC receiving lead. First and 10 at the 26. Roussan. And Roussan is hit right about the line of scrimmage. Might have even lost a yard. Bruce Clark and James Haynes on the play for the Saints. With the status of the New York Giants and their running game today, again, Joe Morris out with a blood disorder. Somehow, I think Mark Bavaro may have a big, big day today. He's really blossoming in only his second year. This could be a second, uh, a, a Pro Bowl performance, rather, for Mark Bavaro. Superior football player. You pointed out the Giants are down to three running backs. They're going to have to go other ways. And Bavaro, who caught six against the Raiders last week, is prime. The ball is at the 26. Roussan to the outside. Sims completes the pass. There's Bavaro, the tight end, who has another first down for the Giants. To the 38-yard line. Antonio Gibson making the tackle. And a 13-yard pickup to Bavaro. One of the things that Bill Parcells told us is how he enjoys watching defensive backs come up and put a hit on Bavaro because it is they that seem to fall off. And this time it's Frank Waddell that comes in way too high and doesn't even phase Bavaro. They're going to have to hit him lower than that. Nine minutes and 12 seconds to go in the first quarter. The Saints lead the Giants 7-0. First down on the delay. Roussan slowed up and is down at the 38 by Bruce Clark. Outstanding offensive lineman. Jim Mora, coach of the Saints, after actually winning his last USFL championship on this very field at Giants Stadium. Yeah, he's no stranger in some of his players. I think 11 Saints, USFL ball players, but this is a big step up to the National Football League. Second and nine at the 40. Out of bounds and covering on the play was Brett Maxey. Joe Morris, who had his first 100-yard game last week, not play, had to suffer a broken nose and all kinds of complications followed. And that's where it started. He was given some medication by the Giants and their medical staff. He developed a low platelet count, and at the risk of getting too complicated, what it means is this. Joe Morris was suffering from exhaustion, and they're afraid that if he was cut, he may not be able to stop from bleeding. So rather than take a chance, they said, Joe, stay home. Third and nine at the 40. Here a pin drop the Giants Stadium right now. Sim getting a rush and an interception. Dave Waymer in the Giant territory and will go down there at the 48-yard line of New York. Bart Oates makes the stop. And now the crowd is booing the Giants who are struggling here in the first quarter. Ricky Jackson, number 57 in your 
screen. Watch him come clean on the blitz. He's going to force a quick throw by Phil Sims. And one of two Saints could have picked this off. But it was Dave Wehmer. And you don't even see a giant receiver in the picture when he makes the interception. So the pressure, the key on this play. And it's a blocking combination that just doesn't work. Two Saints coming from the one side. And Sims has no choice but to either eat it or throw it. He should have eaten it. Action of the Saints lead the NFL with 10 pickoffs so far this year. It's first and 10 for New Orleans in giant territory at the 48. Dalton Hilliard in motion. Wilson looking deep, goes short. And he's got Buford George in his fullback. Fights his way close to a first down inside the 40. Harry Carson making the tackle for the Giants. I think we're going to see an awful lot of that today from New Orleans. They don't think they're going to have time to work the deep pass routes. Dave Wilson knows that if he's going to be successful, he's only going to get three, three and a half seconds to get rid of the football. It's going to be Hilliard, Jordan, Reuben Mays out of the backfield. And you'd think it'd be short patterns, but wouldn't you know it, they've got the game's big play on a long one to Eric Martin. They weren't counting on them. 53 yards to Martin. 7-0 Saints, second and two at the Giant 40. Dalton Hilliard, he'll have the first down. Four. And Hilliard is stopped at the 31-yard line by Terry Kennard, and the Saints have another first down. Dalton Hilliard, a member of the Saints all-short team. He had only 5'8", but he's got the thighs of a man six feet six, breaking tackles and lowers the shoulder, and that's the way to fight for an extra couple of yards. New group of running backs in New Orleans. Hokie Gaijans on injured reserve. Wayne Wilson was traded to Minnesota for Mike Jones. And, of course, Earl Campbell, the great one, retired. So new faces in the backfield. And it's first and ten states on the Giant 31. Wilson is hit. Safety blitz a loose ball. And a penalty marker is down as well. The Giants have recovered. But there's a flag. Collins made the hit on Dave Wilson, the quarterback. And Wilson appears to be hurt. The backup quarterback for the Saints is Babe Loffenberg, who was signed this week. And he's the only other one they have. There is Loffenberg, who is with the Redskins. Well, let's see if they can make a call. We're having a conference. The referee is Bob Frederick. You see any, there's a walkie-talkie, so you know they're talking with upstairs. They're trying to determine whether it was a forward pass or a fumble. Right here is Mark Collins. He's going to come on the blitz and make the hit. Two linebackers come to the one side. They draw the block of Buford Jordan, and that leaves Collins wide open. They're going to try to figure whether this was from the ground level. You make the decision. Was his arm in motion? Number 25, Collins, will make the hit. Let's see if his arm starts forward. I don't think so. Close. Very, very close. He had it up, but was it moving forward? Paul Trapinski is the replay official. I did not see his arm moving forward. After further review by the instant replay, the play will stand as a fumble. However, on the play, there was an offensive holding on number 70, which we will penalize 10 yards with an offensive holding, and the play will stand. So the fumble, and Bill Parcells is saying, what? The well, Giants did not apparently recover. They would have declined the penalty for sure, marked off against the Saints. Well, the Saints then recovered the football. Here, let's get another explanation. 70 It'll be a first down repeated that's Bill Kantz former Cleveland Brown who just reported this week and was signed well it sure looked like the Giants recovered the football but obviously they did not that's why it still is New Orleans football with a penalty in court but it's first and 20 now for the Saints back on the 41 Dalton Hilliard nearly stumbled as he drives the handoff to the 38 yard line gain of three fumble because the whistle had blown so the only thing on that play was the holding penalty Gary Reasons and Jim Burt made the stop on Dalton Hilliard and so we've had a lot of 
starts and stops and delays, and it's still 7-0 Saints, and it's second and 17 on the 38. yards of first down. It'll be third down and extra wide receivers come in the game as Chicago draws first blood. Perry Williams and Harry Carson making the tackle. Well, is that right, Dan, about not being a fumble because it had to be one or the other? No, I think it was a fumble. I think it was a fumble all the way and New Orleans recovered the football. There's no way the play had to have a logical end. It either had to be an incomplete forward pass or a fumble. He did not rule incomplete forward pass. It was a fumble and New Orleans recovered. Now it's third and 13. 34. More wide receivers for the Saints. Here comes pressure on Wilson. He's going to Martin. And a penalty marker is thrown. Terry Kennard. Defending Eric Martin down about the 10-yard line. And Kennard leads his case. conference with the striped shirts. Well, this game is off to a rocky start, especially for the Giants. Keith Ritchie, pass in this series. Number 43. Push down. It'll be a first down for the Saints, just outside the 10-yard line, and Bill Parcells is so upset, his headset is off. And what is he thinking about? Well, he's thinking that there have been a couple major breaks very early in this ball game, and they're all going in favor of New Orleans. New Orleans had a fumbled snap between center and quarterback. They retain possession. They have a very close and controversial play where the ball is fumbled. They retain possession. Now they get the big call at the 10-yard line. It's all going the way of the black and gold. And, of course, the real things like a Waymer interception, which has set, set this situation up. by Lawrence Taylor from behind at the nine-yard line. And Taylor looks like he's aroused right now. I don't know that there's ever been a linebacker that can come down the line of scrimmage and make a play from behind. From the left side of your screen, there comes Lawrence Taylor. Look at him go parallel to the line of scrimmage. Hilliard wants to make the cutback. The minute he makes that decision, Lawrence Taylor is right there. There haven't been many that ever were gifted enough to be able to pull that off. Second down and nine at the nine. Toby Brenner is tight end, who's out of bounds at about the one-and-a-half-yard line. Mark Collins, the rookie, knocked him there, and the Saints are knocking on the Giants' ball once again. Toby Brenner at that time was wide open on the play. He's just lined up right here at tight end. He's going to work to the outside. The zone falls back into the end zone, and he is wide open on the play. See the zone, but the zone didn't realize that you're right on the goal line. You can't give a receiver that much ground. The ball is sitting just beyond the one-yard line. A third down play for the Saints with 419 remaining in the first quarter. Two tight ends. Wilson could have run for the touchdown. He had wide open spaces to the left, but instead he went for John Tice, the tight end, who was defended by Herb Welsh. Oh, I really don't know what Dave Wilson was thinking about. Look at the good fake by Hilliard up into the air. Dave Wilson is outside the contain of the New York Giants. I think he could have easily made it into the end zone. Perry Williams is a couple yards deep, but instead he decides to throw. Boy, that was risky. I think he's going to hate himself when he watches the films tomorrow. And guess what? Another conference. And there might be another penalty marker, although I did not see one thrown. They still indicate third down. And I don't see a flag anywhere on the field. A rocky start by the officiating crew. <laughs> Busy day for Bob Frederick thus far. still don't see a flag, do you? Never saw one. I could read the lips, 
Parcells is yelling for the line judge. Well, I don't know what Harry Carson said to the one. There's a flag. Official. I see the penalty marker now in the end zone. But this is more like a summit conference than a football game so far. Defensive holding on tight end. <laughs> Another penalty on the Giants. And it will be first down and goal. Well, if you, you, Dan, you called this even before this penalty about how things have really worked against the Giants so far. Uh, circumstantial things, whatever you want to call it, is a first and goal now on the one-yard line for the Saints. Well, no Giant player was identified as having committed the infraction, but either John Tice or Hobie Brenner was held, and of course that defensive foul brings an automatic first down. The Saints don't get over. Dalton Hilliard is stopped short of the goal line. to get a little exercise before a second goal. These giant players like to hit for the other end zone. Jim Burt last week ran about 60-some yards with a dead ball. Right now, they got to be getting a little anxious. Mark Bavaro, we understand, has been taken to the giant locker room for an x-ray on his jaw. So we'll follow that and bring you any details. The Giants, outstanding tight end. Meanwhile, second and goal on the one. Saints leading, threatening, 3.45 to go in the opening quarter. And a touchdown for Dalton Hilliard. His third touchdown rushing of the season, and the Saints lead it 13 to nothing. And they have shocked the Giants here in the first quarter in a penalty-filled, controversial first quarter where the Saints have made all the big plays. Well, New Orleans has done exactly what they wanted to do. A team that was a decided underdog. Now the Giants have to play catch-up football, and that's going to make the Saints' defense better than they really are. Morton Anderson with Hanson holding will try to add the 14th point. The kick is good. We have a capacity crowd at Giant Stadium. You wouldn't know it by the sounds. 14 to nothing, New Orleans, in a shocker. Rutherford, New Jersey, Dick Stockton and Dan Deardorff, and the Saints. Underdogs against the Giants lead 14 to nothing in what has been a penalty-filled game, most of them coming by the Giants, and a big play by the Saints offensively and defensively, and right now they're upsetting the powerful Giants. Morton Anderson kicking off. He's got... Solomon Miller and Mark Collins, and it's Collins this time who will take it there and down it for a touchback. Well, the question, of course, as you know, is should instant replay be used in the NFL? And that's the question we are asking in our CBS Sports poll. And you can cast your vote by simply dialing the number listed next to the category of your choice. Yes in the current form, yes in the revised form, or no. And we'll see how the fans are voting at halftime and on the NFL Today postgame show. And keep in mind, there's a 50 cent charge per call. First and 10 for the Giants on the 20 yard line. Bill Sims with the interception, his fifth of the year. Completes the pass to Zeke Moak, who's in there for Bavaro. And we'll be checking on his condition in the game out to the 27. Ricky Jackson making the tackle. Nice to see Zeke Moet back playing football for the Giants. Fell last year with a knee injury during the preseason. Of course, his misfortune was also Mark Bavaro's opportunity to shine, but I don't know how many teams in the National Football League have as talented a pair of tight ends as the New York Giants. Right now, they're operating Dan without Joe Morris and Mark Bavaro, and there are some second and three. Rousson. And Rousson is stopped at the 29 shy of a first down by a yard and a half. Jim Wilkes making the tackle, and there is Dalton Hilliard, the second-round draft pick out of LSU, who's the third all-time leading rusher in the Southeastern Conference. Third touchdown already of the season, so for a rookie, off to a fine start. And they like Reuben Mays, his backup, another rookie from Washington State. Third and one for the Giants. Roussan. He'll have the first down and might have had more had he not 
been tripped up at the 33-yard line by Sam Mills. Roussan, in his second year out of Colorado, was on injured reserve for 14 weeks last year. He's also put on a lot of weight this season to try to bulk up for the rigors of the National Football League. Played around 210 last year. They list him out at 222. First and 10 at the 34. 147 remaining in the first quarter. Sims gets out of trouble and dumps the ball off to the 35 to Roussan. They didn't get much on the play. I think dump is the right word. That is a dumped pass. That was end over end on its way to Roussan. Phil Sims that time under a pass rush from the outside and barely got that one off. Wasn't pretty, but it was good for a couple yards. Here's Roussan, who Parcells, as Dan mentioned, likes very much, and he was kind of geared in case Joe Mars had continued that holdout, as you said. Second and eight now at the 36. Time remaining in the first quarter. complete and he was going for Stacy Robinson Dave Lamer was covering on the play Stacy Robinson would have had to have been about seven feet tall to catch that pass that ball got away from Phil just floated lucky there wasn't a Saint defender in a position to make a play a lot of times an overthrown pass like that is picked off Sims coming into the game needed just 63 yards to become the second giant in history to amass 15,000 in a career. Charlie Connolly was the other one. Third and eight in the shotgun. And Sims up the middle has another pass picked off. Van Jakes. Second interception of the game thrown by Bill Sims. And the Saints will have the ball in giant territory once again. Well, I hate to go out on a limb, but I think Solomon Miller was the intended receiver. Tough to tell with a pass that poor, poorly thrown. Look at the protection. It's flawless. Phil has all day to stand in the pocket, but he throws it just completely behind Miller, who was the intended receiver. But Van Jakes, with a good move, comes down with the Phil Sims second interception of the game. In the NFL, that's how many interceptions they have at Van Jakes, who is with Jacksonville of the USFL on this one. Van Jakes is playing the short man in the zone. He really isn't assigned to anyone. That's why he's there. Just stand there and wait for a bad throw, and he got a gift that time. I don't know what Phil is hearing from upstairs, but I'll guarantee it's not good news. Saints' average starting field position, their own 47. They're in giant territory with 51 seconds to go in the first quarter. In the game, number 36, he goes in motion. Dave Wilson goes to Mays wide open. And Mays will have a first down. Let's see where he stepped out of bounds. Might have been short a yard, but he gets to the 40 in a gain of nine. Kenny Hill, the strong safety on the tackle. Again, I go back to talking about the Saints wanting to work underneath. The Giants, more often than not, drop back into a deep zone. That time in motion. Mays came out, and there was not a Giant within five yards of it. Why wouldn't the Giants say to the Saints, we'll challenge you to go deep against us? Well, I don't know why they don't either, because if I had their pass rush, I'd be doing that a lot. And they know the Saints don't have real good speed in their receiver. Second and one at the 40. Newport Jordan. Close to a first down, and once again, Lawrence Taylor came across and got him from behind. Exactly as he did before. New Orleans is going to have to block Lawrence Taylor. They just can't run away from him. Look at the way he comes down the line of scrimmage. It takes tremendous speed to be able to do that. And that time it was Buford Jordan's turn to not even have a chance. The clock stops for a measurement, Dan. And how do you like that play we saw in the film of Taylor running back in coverage to regain a, on a to play against the Raiders last week. Yeah, we were watching some Raider film, and, and he was sucked clear into the inside and yet made a run 30 yards downfield and made a saving tackle for the Giants. Lawrence Taylor, one of the things I've always marveled at is his conditioning, his ability to go that with that type of intensity every play of the game. It's, you know, that's very, very difficult to do. It is a first down for the Saints, just inside the 40. And They've doubled the giant output. 16 seconds of the clock running remaining in the first quarter. Ruben Mays, nowhere. And guess who? Mr. 
Lawrence Taylor again, and that'll be the last play of the first quarter. It appears that Lawrence Taylor is taking things into his own hands. And the crowd had a smattering of applause on that defensive play, but there's the end of the first quarter here at Giants Stadium. The Saints lead the Giants 14 to nothing. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Miller Lite. For great taste, there's only one light beer. Mobile One Synthetic Motor Oil. Mobile One protects your engine better than any conventional motor oil. And by the heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet. At Giants Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey, we start the second quarter and the lights have been turned on here. And for the Giants and their fans, hopefully the lights will be turned on inside their heads as the Saints have taken the play away from them in the first quarter and lead 14 to nothing. Dave Wilson, who just lost out to Bobby Hebert, is the quarterback in preseason. And Hebert, of course, suffering a broken bone last week. And the turnovers have so far played a role in the Saints touchdown and maybe more before this drive is over. And this game is being played on New York's half of the football field. Second and 11 as we start the second quarter. Saints of the Giant Court. Buford Jordan finds a hole up the middle and gets to the 35-yard line. Jim Burt making the tackle. The Bears going to Cincinnati. Burt leading 21 to nothing. Keep in mind, as this third down play now confronts Dave Wilson, that the Saints probably have the best field goal kicker in the business right now in Morton Anderson. He's kicked 17 in a row, longest current streak. That must look awful good to the Giants. <laughs> third down and six at the 35. Wilson on a design rollout. had blown and Kenny Hill making the stop on Mike Jones who was acquired from the Minnesota Vikings this season and again Terry Kennard the fellow who's a step behind in his pass coverage a design rollout all the way and as you can see Jones just clearly beaten Kennard and Kennard again doesn't make the tackle but if you see Lawrence Taylor he's going to be free coming from the back side and it's a good thing that rollout was called to the right or it would have been a sack the 17 opening minute of the second quarter and the Saints threatening again leading by two touchdowns. Wilson finds Hobie Brenner the tight end who's hit immediately by Mark Collins before Brenner gets out of bounds inside the 15. And there's Collins rookie from Fullerton State and Bill Parcell said he had no problems in starting him today. Oh he was really in love with Mark Collins and his preseason. He really liked his football instincts, his ability to always be in on a play, and he said he's not afraid to take a chance. A lot of young cornerbacks, especially when they get to the NFL, they're afraid to make that play for the football. He said Collins is not afraid at all. Second and five at the 12. Ruben Bain looking for room and gets to the 10-yard line. George Martin making the tackle. So far in the passing department, Dave Wilson is a perfect 7-for-7 seven for, seven for 114 yards and a touchdown. It'll be third and three now for the Saints. You'd, uh, you really would not think that the game so early into the second quarter could be in a position where the Giants would be grateful to only be behind 17 to nothing, but a field goal has to be very attractive right now. intended for Eric Martin. It'll be fourth down and enter Morton Anderson for the Saints. And again, the Saints somewhat lucky on that play because that was not a good throw by Dave Wilson. He threw right into double coverage. Look how close he came to have this one picked off. Luckily, it was a bit overthrown or that would have been intercepted. That's the first incompletion of the day for Dave Wilson and Morton Anderson will attempt a 27-yard field goal. Ryan Hansen will hold, looking for his 18th in a row. And Anderson, the Pro Bowl kicker last year, is successful from 27 yards. And the Saints 
continue to put it on the Giants to the tune of 17 to nothing. 17 to nothing, and turnovers have resulted in 10 points for the Saints. Two interceptions thrown by Phil Sims, and Morton Anderson will be kicking off for the fourth time in this first half. The deep men, Solomon Miller is on the left, Mark Collins to the right. This will go to Collins at the one. They set the wedge up, Collins bobbles it. And Collins brings it out. To the 19-yard line, Pat Swilling makes the tackle. So Phil Sims will try to bring the Giants back right now, trailing 17 to nothing. The Giants have been locked in two out of three close games, and he says the close games have been hard on the Giants so far this season. You know, we like to play a few games where it's comfortable. Instead of playing these tight ones every week, we like to win one comfortably and, and, and take a little pressure off ourselves. Right now, the game is comfortable for the Saints. Yeah, I don't know the test. I don't think that's what they've got today. Two wins like they've had the last couple of weeks have taken their toll. Meanwhile, we've got an injured player down on the field. I believe that's Brett Maxey. He is their nickel back, Brett Maxey. And right now for an NFL Today report, let's go across the river to Brent Musburger in New York. Well, Dick, the Chicago Bears are an entirely different team with Jim McMahon at quarterback. Already today, he has thrown for two touchdowns. This one, a 53-yarder to Willie Galt, and he ran in for a third. The Bears are having an easy time of it. It's 21-0. Let's go back now to Dick and Dan Deardorff. Well, thank you very much, Brent, and Brett Maxey on the sidelines. He has been their nickel back. It'll be the Giants' ball, and Dan, the Giants last year, they were 3-2. and two. They fell behind the Bengals, 21-0, ultimately lost. The year before that, they lost to Tampa Bay in the game they should have won, and, and that's kind of been their problem. But this, uh, you know, this, you really have to wonder, how can this be happening? Because they really are physically so superior to the New Orleans Saints, and I don't mean that as a shot to New Orleans. But here you have what they've done offensively. Absolutely nothing, of course, the two interceptions. And the thing is, look where the drive started. The field position today has been New Orleans all the way. And they haven't been able to run the ball, have they? No, six rushes for a grand total of eight yards. That's a dandy little 1.3-yard average. And all that does is give Bill Parcells headaches. He doesn't have Joe Morris. Had that blood disorder. Did not show up today at the stadium. And Mark Bavaro, we're still trying to get a report on Bavaro. He had x-rays on his jaw. Meanwhile, next Saturday, college football on CBS. And what a dandy we had yesterday with Miami and Testaverde beating Oklahoma. Next week, it's Iowa against Michigan State. And, of course, Lorenzo White last week had 192 yards and two touchdowns, actually, yesterday. And one of the candidates for the Heisman Trophy, although Vinny Testaverde didn't hurt himself yesterday. <laughs> a lot of teams could use him today. Yeah. Maybe one of them right here. First and 10 at the 20. Sims is 5 for 10 for only 34 yards. Roussan on a fake reverse. And he carries it out to the 28-yard line. Dave Wehmer and Sam Mills on the tackle for the Saints. Trying to stop the Saints' flow by showing a reverse. The New York Giants bring it out to the right side. Lee Roussan following the block of Maurice Carthen. Carson has to do away with Dave Waymer, and he doesn't even touch it. Waymer just drifts off to the inside and gets in on the play. Carson missing the block. Gain of eight, second and two at the 20. Carson fights his way for first down yardage. Giants have a first down and draw applause from so, the so far quiet crowd here. James Haynes and Antonio Gibson combine to make the tackle. Tackle on Maurice Carthen. Antonio Gibson elevated to starting status today. Russell Gary, who's been their starting strong safety for a number of years, hasn't played up to the level that Jim Moore would like to see. He's on the bench. First and ten. Sims finds Moat out of the backfield. Good move by Zeke to the 41. Sam Mills making the tackle. You mentioned he had that big year in 84 and then was on the verge of greatness before that knee injury, forcing him to miss all of last year. Zeke Moat playing today because Mark Bavaro has been in for an x-ray. We still haven't heard word as to whether or not Mark Bavaro will be back, but capable hands will call them. Zeke Moat, a fine football player. Second and three for the Giants on the 41. Roussan has Carson blocking and he falls down. 
And instead of first down yardage, Roussan picks up just about a yard. That's all. And Ricky Jackson and James Haynes, the two outside backers on the tackle. In Roussan's defense, down on the field before the game, the field is wet. It rained here in New York yesterday, and the field has not yet begun to dry off. So that time, Roussan, I guess there's no way that he can't be nervous and he can't be tight. Making his first professional start, especially in place of someone like Joe Morris, and especially with his team behind, he's got to be tighter than Trump. This is a play the Giants love to run. Base blocking along the front. They'll bring the off guard, Lee Roussan, running their flow series, as the Giants call it. They ran this play at least 15 times last week against the Raiders. Morris had the big day. That time a first down carry by Roussan. At the 48-yard line, Saints lead the Giants 17 to nothing. In a stunner so far. some room and Roussan is out of bounds not quite out of bounds but into Saints territory James Haynes makes the tackle at the 48 yard line of New Orleans notice the type of passing we're seeing now from Phil Sims a little more conservative working the ball parallel to the line of scrimmage short passes rather than going downfield He's forced it a couple times going downfield, made some bad throws. They've been interceptions. Parcells now maybe letting him get some confidence back by throwing the shorter, high percentage pass. Giants in Saints territory for the first time today. Second and six. Roussan with Billy Yard blocking. Hard runner may have another Giant first down. Frank Watlett and Sam Mills on the tackle. Again, I think we see the flow series. Billy Yard's going to pull, but watch the block by Zeke Moat. He's going to put Ricky Jackson flat on his back. Keep in mind that Jackson is a Pro Bowl football player, and he's going to put Jackson right here. Watch this block. He's going to go right on his back. That's a heck of a block by Zeke Moat. And the Giants starting to come to life with their running game. You pointed out how many teams have two tight ends the way the Giants had in Bavaro and Moat. A lot of teams don't have one tight end that can block like that. The first down for Bill Parcells. Giants at the 42. 8-24 remaining in the first half. The Giants have to come out of this with something. Trailing by 17. Sims with a couple of pumps. Finds Moat. To the 15. And inside the 15 to the 12. seconds he releases Ricky Jackson totally lost but again Sims stood in the pocket for over five seconds before he made the throw and with that pass Sims has gone over the 15,000 mark only the second quarterback Charlie Connolly was the first first and 10 at the 12 for the Giants Sims with a lot of time incomplete the intended receiver Lionel Manuel and Sims has yet to complete a pass to a wide receiver in this first half. And Lionel Manuel got hit after the ball went by. That was close to being a penalty play. The ball had gone past him and he started to relax and he got hit and he got hit good. Meanwhile, Mark Bavaro has come out of the giant dressing room and he is getting set for action. As Manuel is hurt, here it is again. Watch the ball go by. Someone's going to come in from the left of the screen. We don't even see him yet, but the play is over. And I'm sorry, folks, that's a cheap shot. And look at Lionel Manuel's left knee come in, and that's Antonio Gibson, who came in and hit, hit Manuel low. So I one other giant is hurt. And I, I really don't like to see that, Dick. But Bavaro may be all right. We'll take a timeout as they tend to Lionel Manuel. Well, and it doesn't look good as they carry him off the field after that hit in the end zone. It looked like they were working on his knee, and you're going to see it right here. 
from the left of your screen. The ball's already gone. The play is over. Here comes Gibson, but he even goes low. And you see him just blow in on the knee of Lionel Manuel, and I'm sorry. I just don't see any call for a, a play like that. that. That was a cheap shot. I mean, it just appeared to me that Antonio Gibson, both A, could have held up, and B, there was no need to go in low on the knee like that. So the Giants have lost Lionel Manuel and now have only three wide receivers in Manuel, but two touchdown passes last week against the Raiders. He's led the Giants in receiving touchdowns as Sims now with a second and ten. Goes to Moat incomplete. Watlett covering on the play. That time in New Orleans sitting back and waiting for Sims to find an open receiver like he's had tons of time the last couple of times, came with a blitz. Juan Johnson came in, and I think what we saw right there was Phil Sims telling Zeke Moat, hey, it was a blitz. You've got to see it, and you've got to change your pass route. Every passing combination has a blitz alternate, and that time it looked like Moat didn't run it. Three wide receivers, and that's all the Giants have out there now. Bobby Johnson, Stacy Robinson, and Solomon Miller. Third and ten. This is the 11th play coming up of the drive. what he saw. We're at Giant Stadium and a shocking first half here at East Rutherford, New Jersey. Dick Stockton and Dan Deerdorf as the heavily favored Giants. Coming off two impressive wins over the Chargers and Raiders. Trail the Saints 17 to nothing in an era field game and a lot of penalties. 7-19 remaining in the second quarter. Big touchdown pass from Dave Wilson in for Bobby Bear. 63 yards to Eric Martin. Dalton Hilliard with a one-yard run, and then a field goal by Morton Anderson from 27 yards, made it 17 to nothing, and Sims has thrown two interceptions. That resulted in the second touchdown and the Anderson field goal. It'll be third and 10 as Sims has talked things over with the sideline. Giants have to come out of here with at least a field goal. Something that has not been easy for them in the past. Keep in mind now that they have a new kicker today, Raul Alegre. And more about him, and it's been quite a revolving door for Giant kickers. There is Alegre, former Colt. Giants have had the ball in this possession for nearly five and a half minutes. The only thing we know for sure given the Giants and their track record, is that eventually he'll be a former Giant, too. And they keep coming up with those low-digit numbers. The twos, the threes. Allegre. Actually, Allegre was the guy Parcells originally wanted, but he wanted a bonus for just kicking conversions and field goals, which is his job. Tony Galbraith is in the lineup. are playing an outstanding first half defensively. They didn't put a whole lot of pressure on Phil Sims that time. He came out of the pocket late. Tough to fold him that time. I mean, he had two choices. Either throw it away because he had no one open in the end zone or take off and run with the football. Given Phil's pass, the way he's been banged up, and one of the uh, things you have to look at, without a lot of their talented people, you can't afford to get him hurt. I think he did the right thing. Rutledge will hold for Raul Alegre, the sixth place kicker the Giants have had in the last 21 games. This will be a 29-yard attempt. And the kick is good, so Alegre will at least be around for the second half. <laughs> and the Giants get on the scoreboard, something that hasn't come easy. 29-yard field goal makes it 17-3. Well, who have indeed kicked for the Giants? Well, there was an Ali Haji Sheik who was released a couple of weeks ago. Jess Atkinson. Eric Schubert. Bob Thomas, who was a recent Giant kicker and then gone. And Joe Cooper, who missed the 39-yarder last week. The leg raised the current kicker, and uh, that's how many they've had. Six kickers in 21 games. Bill Parcell say when we asked him about kickers, he said, well, if they make them, I like them. <laughs> Let's 
see if this was a cinch by Allegre on the three-pointer. Did this one split the middle, or did he make it exciting? Oh. <laughs> Whoa, look at that one. He made That's... it exciting. <laughs> <laughs> He made it exciting. Well, that was no gimme. The officials had to look close at that one. Hart might have skipped just one beat, maybe. So Allegri will kick off now. And the first time today that the Giants have kicked off. Deep for the Saints is Reuben Mays. He's on the left. And Mel Gray is on the right. And Gray returned to kick 101 yards for a Saints record last week in a losing effort against San Francisco. But right now, we have an NFL Today report, and Brent Musburger will tell us what it's all about. Brent? Well, Dick, this is the other big upset brewing in the NFL. The Philadelphia Eagles have jumped all over the Rams. Beautiful play. Fires a left-handed throwing rookie from Ohio State. Sucks the corner up, and Mike Quick is open 55 yards. It's 17-0 Eagles. Let's go back now to Dick and Dan Deardorff. So the Eagles and the Saints winning games. They're not exposed, supposed to be leading, and there's Manuel still on the field, or on the sidelines anyway. This is the worst starting position the Saints have had all half. 7-0-1 remaining in the first half, 17-3 New Orleans. Quick toss, Dave Wilson to Hobie Brenner, the tight end. First down to the 30. Line. Terry Kennard on the stop and a gain of 18 to the tight end. Brenner. I think we're going to see what the Saints wanted to do. Watch Dave Wilson just take the short drop. He's going to take the three-step drop, find Brenner quickly because he knows pressure's coming from the Giants. One, two, three, bang. That's exactly what he wants to do. And that time Brenner split the Giant linebackers on the secondary that was dropping into the zone. And Hobie Brenner, who is the Saints offensive MVP last year, is shaken up. Well, I know the way a defense thinks. The Giants say, you hurt one of our guys. We're coming after you. First and 10 of the 38. Interesting. John Tice, number 82, is in the tight end. Another quick toss. Incomplete. They were going for Tice. And covering was Terry Kennard. So the Saints with the ball, as we said, deep in their own end. But they have scored on every possession so far in this half. And I think the giant defense has come to life. And it may have been the shot by Gibson on Lionel Manuel that has done it. But that time, the pocket moved past Dave Wilson almost faster than he could drop back. Just keep an eye on the giant front seven and the way they come off the football. I think it's safe to say they're a little angry. Second and 10 at the 38. 6-11 remaining in the first half. the tails of everyone and catch Reuben Mays and watch Lawrence get up. And a penalty. They also have a flag on the play. It appears to be against the Saints. Offensive holding, number 23, and the penalty will be refused. It will be third down. You for Jordan, the converted tailback, playing fullback for the Saints. They declined the penalty. It'll be third down and 10 at the 38. And the crowd smells blood, and I think justifiably so. I know you do. I do. The Giants are alive right now. If I was Dave Wilson, I'd make this a quick throw. And he dumps it off to Jordan. And he's hit at the 40-yard line by Mark Collins, and that'll be good enough to set up fourth down and punt. So Brian Hansen will come in the game for the Saints. His first punt of the game. Mark Collins is deep for the Giants. I'm not a big fan of throwing a parallel pass when you need a full 10 yards for a first down. 
you're asking an awful lot of your running backs to try to break five tackles to get a first down. Hanson fourth in the NFC coming into this game in punt. He called for the fair catch at the last minute. A 36-yard kick, no return, 450 remaining in the first half. Saints having the early lead is that they have a lot of time to come back. Do you sense any momentum change? Oh, a drastic momentum change. I mean, I don't think anyone at the stadium could miss it. And I, I, I'm serious now. I know what goes through a player's mind. They take a look at a player getting cheap-shotted. Lionel Manuel was injured in the end zone, and I think that has caused, you know, the Giants were sleeping. They were out of the ball game. Bam, all of a sudden, they're back in it. What makes a team like the Giants do so well against some other clubs? We've seen it. We're seeing it with the Rams in Philadelphia today, and then all of a sudden be so flat coming home in a game that they know that they should win. Well, let's not, you know, let's not get too critical of the Giants. Let's give the New Orleans Saints a little credit. These are professional football players. They get paid to play just like the Giants. I think it's a combination of the Giants maybe coming out a little soft, but by the same token, these guys in the black and the gold, they've got some pride. They want to play well. They know they're in the Big Apple, and they're playing like it. They sure are. First and ten for Sim to the Giants at the 24. Big to Roussan and Sim has a wide open Stacy Robinson out of bounds and a first down at the 36. Johnny Poe on the tackle, a gain of 13. Mark Bavaro is back, by the way. From the end zone, Phil Sims will just take the straight drop back after a play action fake. Slight roll to the left, but a big cushion being given by Johnny Poe on this side of the field. Stacy Robinson, the simplest pattern of all, just working the sidelines. Easy first down. And the first catch by a giant wide receiver this afternoon. the middle to the 45-yard line and a gain of eight. Alvin Toles, former number one draft pick at inside backer, makes the stop. And I think we'll see a lot of that working across the middle. Toles, a first-year starter. He was a number one draft choice last year. Sam Mills, the other inside linebacker, a new starter. So, hey, if you're the New York Giants offensive people, Ron Earhart, your offensive coordinator, hey, you're going to go to work right in the center of that defense. Go to the inexperience. Second and two at the 45. And the penalty. And a, Bavaro's down again. Mark Bavaro still on all fours. Ball starts. Number 60 in the offense. That was Brad Benson, the left tackle, but we'll be watching Second Bavaro. will be repeated. I think we're seeing some toughness here by Mark Bavaro. He is obviously in pain. Let's see if we can... Pick up Bavaro here on the ISO. Locking on Ricky Jackson. Oh, there it is right there. He has his teammates fall from behind on his right ankle. Boy, you, you're trying to play with one thing hurting, and all of a sudden they give you something else to worry about. Second and two at the 45-yard line. Second and seven makes that. Sim, rushed by Warren and Wilkes. was a fine throw by Phil Sims on the run taking a hit the minute he released the ball and that that was a beautifully thrown pass and Solomon Miller while it would have been a good catch I think should have caught that that's as good as you could throw it if you're Phil Sims you're a tough man well the ball it hit him right on his hands I mean I granted he was diving and horizontal but they work on that all day long that ball hit him on the hand it would have been a darn good catch don't misunderstand me no receivers are paid to make darn good catches. Third down. Pat Swilling, a rookie linebacker, playing down lineman now in the game, and the pass is caught close to a first down. Let's see where they spot it. And the catch, Tony Galbraith, tackled by Ricky Jackson, and this is an important spot of the ball. They're going to have a measurement, and if the Giants didn't make it, they didn't make it by... The ball just, just got moved. moved. They just moved the ball a foot forward. That's all they needed. <laughs> That's all he wanted was a foot. 
They moved it a foot, and that's all the Giants needed <laughs> to get that first down. You now, believe that? Now they may have, with the new football in there, moved it back a little bit. And now they just signal first down. I guess it's the first thing. Boy, now that... How do you not even bring the chains across? They, they are. Oh. The one official ran it all the way up to the hash mark and spotted it and signaled first down. Now they are bringing the chains across. You think it's because the ball was in front of the giant bench? Well, I'd like to know how it got <laughs> slid forward a foot like that. Well, it is a first down. And you're right. That's exactly how far they had to move it. <laughs> first down, Giants. Why? <laughs> I'm, I'm a little mystified, I have to be honest with you. How does the ball just arbitrarily get slid forward a foot? I've never seen anything like that. I think John Madden has a book about that. Yeah, left foot, right foot. <laughs> first and yeah. ten, the Giants on their own 47. That's the time remaining in the first half. 17 to three, the Saints lead them. Playing good ball so far. Sim wide open is Bavaro. First down. Watlick brings Bavaro down. talking about they're going to go to work on those two inside linebackers Mills and Tolls looking to bail out of there Bavaro and Mills is just going to cleanly miss the tackle a little jitterbug by Mark Bavaro oh what a fabulous football player he's become but again they're working on the Saints inexperience in the middle and a good block by Maurice Carthen in there too first and ten Giants on the Saints 29 243 on the clock Roussan on a reverse to Solomon Miller. Sims throws a block. And Miller is down at the 22 by James Gethers. So the quarterback was out there blocking. Solomon Miller is going to come in motion. He just went out of your picture to the right. He's going to come back in and take the handoff. The Saint defense down to the middle. And here comes Bill Sims who puts Van Jakes right on the ground. One of the best lead blocks of the day. Solomon Miller, sixth round draft pick out of Utah State. And we'll have our two minute warning now as the Giants will have a second and seven at the 26. Trying to get to within at least, well, hopefully seven of the Saints when we come back. First half, and the Giants are threatening, but the Saints lead it 17 to 3. The timeout story. Saints have all of theirs. The Giants used one earlier. They have two remaining. And Giants trying to move closer on a second and seven at the 26-yard line against the same team that really challenged the 49ers into the fourth quarter last week. So this team can play tough against good teams. four-yard line. Bruce Clark made the tackle. Let's see who moved. That'll make it second and two. Some people over in Manhattan probably moved <laughs> as loud as Phil Sims used voice inflection and he was successful. He got a couple of the Saints to come across the line of scrimmage. You're coached on defense to look at the football. Defense offside. Jim Moore, by the and way, the has number never lost. Number 94. That was Jim Wilkes. Jim Moore, as I was saying, has never lost two consecutive games as a head coach. Right now, he's in front, 17 to 3, but second and two coming up for the Giants on the 21. And there's the yardage story so far. Here's to be two different ball games. First quarter, all New Orleans. The second quarter now has been all New York. They threaten at least close New Orleans' lead. Sim. Going for Solomon Miller and a flag is down. Waymer and Gibson covering Solomon Miller. Most of the penalties have gone against the Giants today. Was this ball catchable? 
Illegal contact. Defense number 44. Dave Weimer, and it'll be a first down for the Giants. Dave Weimer first jumped up in the air. It is clearly, a first down. Clearly making contact all the way down the field. You've got a five-yard zone. That doesn't matter whether that ball was catchable or not. That penalty occurred before the ball was even thrown. And the infraction was not down around the goal line, but at the 18-yard line. Here's Waymer, who's a native of Brooklyn, New York, and played at Notre Dame. First and 10 Giants on the Saints 17. 150 on the clock. Sims. Roussan couldn't hold on, and he was there. The ball was there. put this one on the scoreboard. A perfect throw right into the chest of Lee Roussan, and he does not have possession. Clearly never had possession. Lee Roussan, who's touted as having good hands that time, made a youngster's mistake. He'll get other chances. Second and ten. Forces a fumble at the 19 yard line. We'll wait for the official call on a big pileup. And they haven't they haven't given it yet. It's giant ball. The Saints had pointed their way, but the officials who count say it's giant ball. Let's see if we can figure this one out. Sims, the pocket collapses. He's unsure of where to go. Takes off, and there comes Frank Warren. And flying back in is Solomon Miller, and he makes the recovery. Fine hustle by Miller, but now he loses the football. He had it. He lost it. He must have gotten it back because they gave it to New York. So Jim Barra and Morris Saints very nearly came up with another turnover. This officiating crew is being put in a position of making some tough calls today. Third down and 12 at the 19-yard line with 1.33 on the clock. Sims in the shotgun. Defensive mentality. When you're a former defensive coordinator like Bill Parcells, that's the nicest thing you can say about someone. Four catches in the game for Mark Bavaro, including a touchdown. And coming up at halftime, Brent Irv and Will with scores and highlights. And William Andrews come back. And what a comeback it has been. And of course, our instant replay poll. And we hope you've been checking in with your opinion. 
Here again is the instant replay question and the numbers to call. 50 cents per call, by the way. If you agree with it in the current form or the revised form or not at all. Kick off to Mel Gray. Gray hit. The whistle had blown and he was down. He was down at the 21-yard line. Andy Head doesn't agree. the 40-yard line where the tackle made by Terry Kennard and Lawrence Taylor also involved. Under a minute to go and the Saints in a hurry-up offense. Still with three timeouts to go. Second and one. Pressure. Marshall on Wilson. Completes underneath to Eric Martin who has the first down. Lawrence Taylor makes the stop. And now the Saints are going to call the first of their timeouts. 41 seconds remain, and each team has two left. Good first half by Dave Wilson, who has been in and out of the starting lineup in his career with the Saints. Let's check some scores. Cincinnati finally gets on the board. Down by 14. Another big game of the day, San Francisco and Miami. Miami only three points in the second quarter. You don't see that often. Here's a shocker. Yeah, sure. Buddy Ryan looking for number one. Other games, Minnesota leading Green Bay 28-7, and the Vikings have to be considered a surprise team. Detroit and Cleveland tied at halftime at seven apiece. Same thing with Houston and Pittsburgh there in the second quarter. And that's a tough game today. Washington, nine points. I wonder if that was three field goals or a touchdown and a safety. And Brent will have highlights coming up shortly. Saints with a timeout. 17 to 10. Eric Martin on a 63-yard touchdown reception from that man, Dave Wilson. Dalton Hilliard with a touchdown, a field goal by Anderson, and then the Giants came back. And when you're a decided underdog in a game like this, I think New Orleans will try to move the ball. They've got Morton Anderson. I think they'll try to get into field goal range. Well, the Saints haven't committed any turnovers. Their offensive line has been weak, has protected Dave Wilson very well. Four wide receivers for the Saints. First and ten. And they go to Buford Jordan, the running back who has a first down in the giant territory. Where he is stopped at the 42 and a gain of 14. Gary Reasons on the tackle. And a penalty marker is down and they'll bring it all back, holding against the Saints. Illegal use of the hands on the offense. Number 70, first down will be repeated. Bill Kotz with his second penalty of the day. Brings back a good game. An interesting use of Lawrence Taylor by the New York Giants as they walk him off all the way to the outside. He's actually playing cornerback. Working that time against Kelvin Edwards, one of the wide receivers. Boy, there's a surprise. Lawrence coming up and making a hit. First and 20, back of the 34 in St. Territory. Underneath again to Ruben Mays, and Harry Carson takes care of him at the 36. We're going to have another timeout. Saints will be left with one timeout. Kantz, who's been called for two holding calls today at left tackle, I think we have to point out there's always someone who gets some credit when someone makes a mistake. We have to credit Leonard Marshall with the defensive pressure. He's forcing Kantz into making those holding plays. Keep in mind, Marshall, who has really not gotten his pass rush underway, Bill Parcell says, I expect more from Marshall. And getting back to the Saints, Jim Dombrowski, their number one draft pick, suffered a broken bone in his left foot last week. He was a starter. 
Darren Gilbert should have been the man in there, but uh, Jim Mora hasn't been happy with him. No, he was not happy at all with his week of practice. He expected Gilbert to be the starter. Kant's just in. One thing Kant's does have going in his favor is that a year ago, when the Cleveland Browns were here against the New York Giants, he played almost the entire ball game at left tackle against Leonard Marshall. So he did have that going for him, but Gilbert really looked poor during the week of practice, and actually it's been very warm in New Orleans, and I guess it was during Wednesday's practice when he didn't even make it to the end. You that's, think, that's not the way to impress the head coach. You think that's a reward for Kant's to go against Marshall? Second and 18 with 23 seconds to go. Dick Stockton and Dan Deardorff. Giants were down 17 to nothing, trail 17 to 10. Waning seconds of the first half. Wilson gets hit by Marshall, but gets rid of the ball. Incomplete. Pass was intended for Mike Jones. An excellent pass rush that time by Leonard Marshall. Put a spin to the inside, back to the outside, beat Conson, put a late hit. There's Leonard Marshall right in the middle of your screen. A spin to the inside, picked up by a guard, fights over two people and still comes in late and forces Dave Wilson to get rid of the ball. Well, the sacks are not what counts to Bill Parcells. Is it? No, Bill Parcells likes to count how many times the quarterback is dropped. He was pleased last week they dropped Plunkett 15 times. Ruben Mays on a draw play gets the ball close to midfield on third and 18. And he gets it to the 48-yard line before Terry Kennard and Jerome Sally make the tackle, a gain of 11. And the Giants call a timeout. Well, in the past, the Giants have been known for losing games they should have won, and it has cost them. Here's Harry Carson. Harry Carson, the veteran inside backer at 32. Uh, we games last year to some people who we felt like we could beat. And if anything that we gained from last season, it, it was, it's that... Uh, we had opportunities and we blew them. We we lost six games by a total of 20, 21 points, something like that. Uh, had we have played a little harder in certain areas, uh, you know, we could have been Super Bowl champions. Seven-time Pro Bowler, he's the spirit of this giant team. And don't you love his mature attitude? It's always easier to say that it's someone else's fault. You have to admire someone that says, hey, it was our fault. We had the opportunities. We didn't capitalize. It is fourth down for the Saints. And the Giants calling the timeout have one left and envision getting the ball back. And Brian Hansen will come on to kick it away. So with 11 seconds to go, they'll have to make quick work to see if they can try to muster up some more points. Hansen kicking from the 32. Mark Collins is back. will let it bounce into 20. And it goes out of bounds. Two seconds on the clock. Giants will have it. That kick went 32 yards. What does Sims do with two seconds starting from his own 20? Not much. <laughs> you head for the locker room. I think they would just as soon not even run a play. We're having another discussion. Back up field. And there is a flag on the far side. New Orleans did not report ineligible man. It would be a five-yard penalty and fourth down. I would think the Giants would want it a re-kick. Oh, but let's see. The Giants now are signaling from the sidelines to decline. On the service level, the signal from the Giants sideline was to decline the penalty. Andy Hedden and Myron Hunt. Everyone is signaling decline. 80 people on the sidelines are doing the same thing. Penalty will be refused. Two seconds to go in the first half. I wonder if we looked at the replay of everyone over on the Giants sideline signaling no timeout. <laughs> Bill Sims had a rocky beginning today, throwing two interceptions to Dave Wehmer 
the Van Jakes and the Saints scoring 10 points on those interceptions. And the Saints have been a mighty foe, at least for the first 30 minutes today. And now they'll hit for the dressing room. That is the end of the first half here at Giant Stadium. Not much for the Giant fans to cheer about because the Saints have ruled. But the Giants have come back, and it's 17 to 10. by Chrysler Plymouth. We're working together to be the best. STP makers of... Dick Stockton and Dan Deerdorf back at Giants Stadium where the Saints lead it 17 to 10 over the favored Giants at halftime. And a big story, of course, has been the turnovers where the Saints have scored 10 points on two interceptions. And I guess, Dan Deerdorf, that as Wellington Maris said, there are no sleepers in the NFL and the turnovers can really equalize a lot of teams. Yeah, turnovers always seem to come to the forefront. Emotion can play a big part in it, too, when, when you've got a mismatch. But more often than not, it ends up being mistakes. The team that makes the fewest mistakes ends up winning. Here, let's take a look at it right here. We're going to start off with the first of Phil Simms' interceptions. I believe this is going to be Dave Wehmer, and this is just a pass that, you know, where was it going? I don't know. Only Phil Simms, I think, knows the answer to that. And that ultimately resulted in a Saint touchdown. And this time, it'll be number 22, Van Jakes, who's just simply working in man coverage, falls off to play the zone and then look at the ball, underthrown and behind the intended receiver. And that results in a field goal. Saints had a 17-0 lead. The Giants came back with 10, and that's where we are right now. And CBS Sports coverage of NFL football will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Subaru. Inexpensive and built to stay that way. IBM. And by RCA. The New Orleans Saints will be receiving and Raul Allegre with a field goal and a conversion will be kicking off. Ruben Mays to the left and Mel Gray to the right for the Saints. Lights have been on since the early moments here on an overcast afternoon here at Giants Stadium. Ruben Mays at the goal line. Penalty marker down. Ruben Mays still going past the 40-yard line. And Ruben Mays in a foot race is going to go all the way for a score, but a penalty marker was thrown way downfield at the 18-yard line. That's a 100-yard return, but the flag will bring it back. Blocking from behind. Last week, Mel Gray returned 101 yards, and that stuck. This one, though, definitely coming back. I saw one block from behind, and it was pretty obvious. The one I saw was on number 51, Sam Mills. Illegal block above the waist on the kick return team, number 51. That's who it was, Sam Mills. Sam Mills clearly comes in from behind. Let's take a look at it. I think we're going to see it right here. Watch the block. It's going to be on number 51 of the Giants by number 51 of the Saints. There it is, right in the back, number 51, Sam Mills. Robbie Jones was the Giant. Boy some way to start the second half for the Saints. Instead, they're on their 10-yard line. First down, Dalton Hilliard off left tackle. Out to the 13-yard line. If you're looking at what the Saints have produced in the second half, it hasn't been that good. They've been outscored to the tune of 37-14. Quickly, and Hilliard gets to the 16. The 
the Giants wanted the, uh, rather the Saints wanted to run an unbalanced line and no huddle in an effort to confuse the New York Giants. Let's take a look at it, but here's the unbalanced line. Look, four linemen count them to this side, and now they're going to go away from it. And they wanted to run it without a huddle to confuse the New York Giants. It didn't seem to work. More blue shirts than white at the point of attack. For reasons and banks for the blue shirts. And down goes Wilson at the five. sacked by the Giants today. Two linebackers are going to come from the same side of the football. Taylor and Hedden, and Andy Hedden, number 54, is unblocked. Alcantz, number 70, comes off to pick up Lawrence Taylor, and Andy Hedden has a free run to the quarterback. Loss of nine, and Brian Hansen, deep in his end zone, will kick Mark Collins, is standing in midfield for the Giants. Took some guts. What did I say that Bill Parcells told us that he liked most about Mark Collins? He wasn't afraid. He took a hit in the head, though. I'm afraid he hurt himself. Van Jakes missed the tackle. Mark Collins went ahead and ran without his helmet, and I think he took a blow to the head. No fair catch. Van Jakes right on top of him. And off comes the helmet. He takes one shot from his own teammates, but then puts his head down and burrows forward. I don't know, Mark. Discretion might have been the better part of Valor right there. He's got the job. Well, I hope he's just not hurt. He does have the job. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not often you're going to see toughness like that. He doesn't have to do that. Colin starting for Elvis Patterson who has a strained left groin muscle and has not seen any action. Collins, the rookie from Fullerton State. And he's clearly disoriented. Let's look at it again. We can see exactly where he gets hit. Number 58, I believe, is going to make contact. There's Jack Del Rio right in front of him. And now Glenn Red comes in from the side right there. Oh, right. The head. Boy, that's tough. That's tough. Best starting field position for the Giants. Their own 49. Trailing 17-10. Bill Sims with Stacy Robinson. And a gain of 23. Watlett and Gibson. Right across the middle, the New Orleans safeties drop into their very deep zone. The two linebackers came up, and look at the void that creates in the middle for Stacy Robinson. He was the only giant wide receiver to catch a pass in the first half. Lee Roussan, penalty markers fly as Roussan gets to the 23-yard line. Bruce Clark was the first man, and Mills also there. And this may be against the Giants. Holding as indicated. Offensive holding, number 660. And the down will be repeated. Left tackle Brad Benson that time. With the Giant offensive line, you got to do more than just say six, as every one of the guys up front wears a number in the 60s. I <laughs> have to say that's very unusual. You're you normally have a 50 and a couple of 70s uh, sprinkled in there, but they're 63, 61, 65, 67, and getting some notoriety, number 60, Brad Benson. Two backups, William Roberts and Damian Johnson. First down and 18. Giants back to the 35. Of New Orleans. Zim getting pressure. Pass is caught by Solomon Miller. Close to a first down. The 16, 17-yard line, a gain of 19, and it appears to be enough for a first down. And the key is the Saints blitz. Watch 54 come in, and Bardot's the center, picks him up. 
That blitz means there's man coverage, and it's Dave Waymer working on Solomon Miller. Solomon shook him with the move to the inside. Credit Oates that time, though, with picking up Alvin Tolls and allowing the time for the completion. Plenty of time in this third quarter remaining, 11 and a half. It's 17 to 10. Giants first and 10 on the same 16 and a play. Was it Bart Oates? Cross, guys, on the offense. The two penalties on the offensive line in this drive has not really stalled Phil Sims march here as they mark it back at the 21. Boy, one of those scores jumped right out at me. Wasn't it Philadelphia leading 34 to nothing over the Rams? Wow. You know, Sims and Oates have had their problems. They had the fumble Monday night against the Dallas Cowboys, first game of the year that, that really cost them. And they had some miscues last year between each other. Oates played for Jim Mora three years in the USFL. First and 15 at the 21. Sims batted down at the line. James Haynes. Outside linebacker, Frank Warren. In the middle. 11 minutes remaining in the third quarter. Dick Stockton and Dan Deardorff for Giants Stadium. And a surprising challenge that the Giants are getting today from the upstart New Orleans Saints who lead it 17 to 10. But New Orleans led 17 nothing at one point and the Giants trying to come back here. Second and 15 at the 21. to Lee Roussan, James Gethers was right there. I guess he was right there. He almost took the handoff. Lee Roussan, not a chance of going anywhere. As if Gethers would have been there a half a step sooner, he might have taken the handoff from Sims. We told you Joe Morris not played today. Blood disorder has kept him home, and the Giants have also lost wide receiver Lionel Manuel as a sprained knee. Third and 16. At the 22. Sims going to Stacey Robinson and a flag. He was held. Dave Lamer again. First down for the Giants. If indeed it is against the Saints. Illegal contact on the defense, number 44. Stacy Robinson tries to make a break to the outside. Dave Waymer with the left hand. You see him pull it back there, but too late. He was already spotted. Now, Phil Sims thought he might have a touchdown pass. Had to wonder why Robinson wasn't where he should have been. Dave Waymer's left hand was wide. <laughs> and with Manuel out of there, a lot of the burden falls more on Stacy Robinson's shoulders. And Waymer uh, with an interception today. But also two interference calls, holding calls, down near his own goal line. First and ten Giants on the St. 17. Sims quick toss. It was tight end, Mark Favaro, who drags Watford inside the 10-yard line. Remember when I talked before and we saw Phil Sims talking to Zeke Mowat about not making a blitz adjustment? Watch Mark Favaro read the blitz and just make his quick break to the outside when he sees the blitz coming. And Sims instantly gets the ball to Bavaro. That's a fine play by a tight end and a veteran quarterback, and we saw Sims talking to Moat about it in the first half. He didn't make the break. Bavaro did, and he has his fifth catch of the day for 76 yards. Second and three at the 10. Roussan up the middle. First down inside the five. Antonio Gibson and Ricky Jackson were there, and another good block by Maurice Parker. One surge that time by the giant offensive line. Roussan goes way to the outside before he makes his decision to cut back. But look at the cavity up the middle. 
It's Ricky Jackson coming in clear from the backside that makes the play. And a giant player is being carried in the locker room. It may be Mark Collins. The preliminary is that it is Mark Collins who lost the helmet and continued to run early. First and goal of the fourth. Carson. And there's nothing like hearing the sounds which Dan Deardorff knows full well. But a chance for you to hear the sounds of an inside rush near the goal line. Carson. Getting close. From your television, you hear the sound. When you're on the line of scrimmage, you feel the sound. The sound is a real thing. Again, now, an opportunity to pull within one for the New York Giants. Using Damian Johnson, number 68, an offensive guard in the backfield on the short yardage play. Could this be a page out of the refrigerator's playbook? Damian Johnson is going to be the lead blocker. A backup guard? Well, I don't know if he was all that effective. Alvin Tolles got underneath Johnson, stopped him at the line of scrimmage. Third and goal at the one. Saint players are celebrating. It's against the Giants. Holding. Tough place. You can't get any closer than the Giants had it to the one. Bob Frederick will explain. Offensive holding. Number 63. And the down will be repeated. Will be third down. Carl Nelson. At 285, the biggest of the Giant offensive linemen. Boy, it is tough to hold from the one yard line when you're down as low as you can get on a running play. Let's see if we can spot it. Carl Nelson will be the right side of your screen. Well, you see the right arm to the outside as he takes his man down to the inside. Boy, that hurts the Giants. Third and 11. Third and goal really at the 11. from Bruce Clark. Incomplete fourth down, and each team has had a penalty nullify a touchdown this half. Ruben Mays ran 100 yards with a kickoff called back. Carthens' one-yard plunge was nullified. And Raul Allegre will come in the game, and so the Giants came oh so close to getting six. They were in the end zone, brought back out Carl Nelson with the flag. That time, though, Bruce Clark around the legs of Bill Sims, forcing to throw the ball away. This will be a 28-yard attempt. Rutledge holding for Allegre, who has clicked on a 29-yard. And this kick is good. The Giants 17 to 13, following Allegre's second field goal of the game. And I think he realizes what this means to make two in a row. Hasn't happened around here in a long time. Raul Allegre, quite excited. And he can come back for next week's game. He'll be kicking off to Reuben Mays and Mel Gray. All season on kick and punt return. Stop Mays at the 15. Solomon Miller on the tackle. Well, next Sunday, it all begins with the NFL today, and then the Vikings, who could be 3-1, and one, go against the Bears, who should be unbeaten. And we will be there at Soldier Field in Chicago. One of those NFC Central battles. And the second game of the doubleheader, and this is really a tremendous game. Dallas Cowboys pay a visit to Mile High Stadium in Denver. John Elway, Danny White, Herschel Walker. Set. First, what you can ask for. <laughs> and you'll get a first and ten at the 26. Okay. Wilson and a great hit. Gary Reasons on Buford Jordan. The 
giant linebackers are so talented. Gary Reasons, number 55, lined up at left inside linebacker. The key here is when he realizes it's going to be a short throw, look how quickly he closes to the ball carrier. The ball and Reasons got to Buford Jordan at exactly the same time. Giants blessed with depth at every linebacker possession. Andy Hedden has come in for Gary Reasons inside. Dalton Hilliard gets a couple and is not quite out to the 20 yard line. Kenny Hill right in the middle of that scrap. It'll be third down. Harry Carson and Jim Burt made the tackle. Seemed like the whole first quarter was played in Giant territory. Here in the third quarter, it's all in New Orleans territory. And the Giants have had the ball a little more than nine minutes more than the Saints, and that's been the same problem all season. Dick, even if the Saints don't get points, they've got to move the ball at least up the midfield. Third and seven at the 29. Four wide receivers. Wilson. Incomplete. Eugene Goodlow, the intended receiver, and it's fourth down. And now the Saints and Wilson are frustrated. Well, Dave Wilson should be up straight because Eugene frustrated. Goodlow is open. Look at his break to the inside, but the ball way overthrown. That would have been a completion, and that would have been a first down if the ball would have been a couple feet lower. Brian Hansen will kick to a new man, Tony Galbraith, who was a former number two draft pick by the Saints and spent five years in New Orleans, replacing Mark Collins, who had to be taken off. Hansen at the five. Giants put the heat on. Galbraith with a fair catch at the 38-yard line. And with 6.06 remaining in the third quarter, the Giants trailing by four. Get it again. 17 to 13. And next Saturday, it's two top 20 teams here on CBS. The Iowa Hawkeyes, the Michigan State Spartans. Of course, Lorenzo White, the Heisman Trophy candidate, runs the ball for Michigan State. Iowa 3-0 on the year. First and 10 at the 38. Sims has it tipped in the air. Bruce Clark was in the middle. Don't know if he got a hand on it. And right now, we have an NFL Today report. Brent Musburger has it from New York. Brent. Dick Tommy Kramer continues to build his stats today. Here's touchdown pass number six. This one to Mike Malarkey. The record is seven. Joe Cap last did it for the Vikings back in 1969. Back to Dick. And Jerry Burns doing a fine job of the Vikings, who are headed for three and one. Bruce Clark is out of the game. It's second and ten at the 38 now. at the 44-yard line. Picked up six on the play. Frank Watlett and Pat Swilling in on the play. Lee Roussan having to start in place of Joe Morris in his first NFL regular season start. Here's what the Giants have done the last time. Four times they've had the ball. Four points. That's exactly what they've done. Two field goals and a touchdown. 45. Sims facing a safety blitz by Brett Maxey throws incomplete for Tony Galbraith. Ricky Jackson covering. Saints that time blitzed three people. Maxey's going to come from here and both of the inside linebackers are going to come on the blitz. Watch him take the shot from behind. That's Brett Maxey coming from the bottom of the screen. And Sims takes a shot right from behind. And now they've got a punt. Sean Landetta will do the honors. Kelvin Edwards is back for the Saints. And a lot of pointing going on. And if this is on New Orleans, it's going to be a first down. It was fourth and three. Offensive tackle. They will be returned. So they'll have to kick it again. If they're 
been a lot of penalties in this game, or is this just my imagination? There have been, and there have been a lot <laughs> early, too. And a lot of them have come in critical situations. 13 penalties all told in the game. Six for New Orleans and seven for the Giants. Here's Edwards. the ball. Good hustle by Greg Lasker, the rookie from Arkansas. Landetta last week had punts of 61 and 55 yards against the Raiders. And talk about ineffective. New Orleans has run the has run six plays here in the second half for a grand total of one yard. Lawrence Taylor quickly all over him. Under five minutes remaining in the third quarter. 4.50 to be exact. And the Giants with that terrific defense. Smell blood here. Saints second and eight on the three. Clinging to a 17 to 13 lead. You can almost hear Wilson's call. this call I guess that's why Jim Moore gets paid to be a coach but this is a tough call you're the underdog you've got a four-point lead there are a lot of risks here by being too conservative and just running it into the line and saying we'll punt will he throw it or not let's find out third and seven incomplete Intended for Eric Martin, and covering was Elvis Patterson, who's back in the game, did not play. A rollout by Dave Wilson to get away from the pass rush. He didn't roll far enough. He still took a shot that time by Andy Hedden. But as you can see, overthrew Eric Martin. Hansen has no room back there, and he'll be kicking to Tony Galbraith on fourth down. Galbraith on the run, muffs it, and covers up wisely at the 42-yard line. A 39-yard kick, but the Giants will have the ball in Saints territory, trailing 17 to 13. 325 remaining in the third at one time led 17-0. The Giants have come back with 13 points and their defense has put them in good field position. First and 10 on the New Orleans, 42. Bill Sims up the middle. Bavaro started a run before he had it and it'll be an incompleted pass. Nick, you didn't leave me anything to say because that's exactly what he did. He started to run before he caught it. One of the oldest coaching you can tell a player, don't take your eye off, on the, off of the ball and look upfield before you put it away. No matter how long you play this game, you still have to go back to the very basics. Second and 10.
first down for the Giants. An 11 yard pickup. Johnny Poe covering on the play. The perfect pocket right here by the New York Giants in their offensive line. Look at the throwing alley up the middle for Phil Sims. No problem at all in spotting Johnson on the crossing pattern. A four man rush that time by the Saints. Ineffective. First and 10 at the 31. Bill Sims last week came alive in the second half after struggling in the first half against the Raiders. Broussard had a fine play by Bruce Clark. He'll lose two yards on the play. Things that are important on stopping a running play. Support in the force. Watch the force this time by Antonio Gibson, but it'll be Bruce Clark that comes in and then finishes off the play. Look at Gibson get upfield. He's too far up for Billy Ard to make a good block. He's moved too far up, and then it's Bruce Clark who comes in and finishes off the play. Second and 12, back at the 33. Catches the ball and his momentum carried him inside the 30. And Frank Watlett and Dave Waymer give him a ride way back. Bobby Johnson becoming an effective part of the giant offense on this drive. Here comes the blitz again. You can see number 53, Vaughn Johnson coming in. But again, the giant offensive line asserting itself. That time, really the same pattern as before, only this time Johnson crossing to his left rather than running the crossing pattern to the right. Coming into the game, two of his seven catches were good for touchdowns. He goes out now on third and seven at the Saints' 28-yard line. Stacy Robinson to the left, Solomon Miller to the right. Dahlbrecht is in there. Sim was in the grass, and they blew the whistle, and it was Ricky Jackson with his first sack of the season. He has averaged 11 the last three years. Ricky Jackson, again coming in his second sack of the season. I think this is Jackson lined up right here. He's going to come straight in on the blitz. But he was picked up. He was picked up and beat the block. Boy, that's what really hurts. He beat Carthman on the on the play. When you got a guy, he's supposed to be there and block him. That's what really hurts. Loss of nine, and Sean Landetta will be kicking to Eric Martin with a half a minute to play in the third quarter. I believe we've got a delay a game call. Fourth down. Be repeated. Five yards. Parcells was hoping the Giants would not have to struggle coming into the part of the schedule where he would have the likes of the Saints, the Cardinals, and the Eagles after three tough games to start the year. To tell you the truth, they probably took that penalty on purpose. Have a little more room for Landetta. to the 21-yard line where he's stopped by Robbie Jones, and I don't know how Lasker ever missed that tackle. But there's a flag. Saints putting in Martin in place of Kelvin Edwards who fumbled the last punt. Greg Lasker, the rookie from Arkansas. We've had more conferences today between officials. it is it's obviously going against the Saints the illegal use of the hand on the kick return team number 26 and we're penalized half the distance the yards back there Willie Tullis so the Saints backed up again they have five seconds remaining in this third quarter well, this must seem like all the room in the world now they're all the way out to the four yard line last time they were on the one foot line Field. First and ten at the four. Their defense.
the starting position was the 16. This half. Testing the middle is Buford Jordan. And Lawrence Taylor makes the tackle. And that is the end of the third quarter where the Saints still lead the Giants, but it's 17 to 13. Welcome back to Giants Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. This is Dick Stockton along with Dan Deardorff and the Giants coming in two and one against the Saints one and two and perhaps expecting an even easier time of things than they've had or locked in a tough battle trailing 17 to 13. But you have to think that things are going the way of the New York Giants when you look at where this ball game has been played. And Jim Moore is looking towards his own goal line right now. And if you're a defensive-oriented coach like Bill Parcells, you've got to love the field position. His defense has pinned New Orleans repeatedly back against their own goal line and not let them, has not let them rather get out. Second and nine at the five. To the eight-yard line, Gary Reasons making the tackle. Let's take a look at field position. New Orleans here in the second half have been at the 10, the 16, the 1, and the 4. The bottom four have been where they've been in the second half. Awful tough to go anywhere when you have to go 90, 85, 99 yards for scores. That's awful hard to do. Shy of a first down to Mike Jones. Herb Welch making the tackle. They're shy by about a yard, and here comes Brian Hansen to punt. And Welch saved the first down. And punting for the sixth time, and Tony Galbraith, who took over for the injured Mark Collins. Hanson gets off a fine kick. Galbraith at the 35. Van Jakes hits him immediately, and he's down at the 35. A 51 yard kick by Brian Hanson. And the key right there is not only was it a 51-yard kick, but zero return for a net 51. Hard to do. We've been talking about the instant replay and your fans, the fans' opinion. These are the numbers to call if you believed and hear the results so far. People seem to be in favor of the instant replay system in a revised form. Those are the numbers. 50 cents charge on a call. First and 10 at the 36 for Sims. And he finds Stacy Robinson inbounds and a first down at the 48-yard line. Poe and Haynes defending. Johnny Poe closes to the ball here on Stacy Robinson. Nice job of getting both feet inbounds. And Phil Sims, that was a good toss. Give him credit for that one. Well executed sideline pattern by both men. just into New Orleans territory. Bruce Clark and Antonio Gibson make the tackle. The Giants have six first downs this second half. The Saints yet to pick up one. Season ticket holder. A future, I think. Mm -hmm. Second and eight at midfield. 17 to 13, the Saints lead the Giants. Fourth quarter. Zip. Almost intercepted by Gibson, and it was tipped in the air and kicked off by Johnny Poe. And the third interception of the game by the Saints. And Johnny Poe has it on his own 45. Three different Saint ball players touched that football. 
Let's take a look at it from the end zone. Phil Sims will throw it towards our right. The first Saint right there. Oh, look at the save. Antonio Gibson pops it back up in the air. Johnny Poe, Saints ball. And we'll return after this word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Miller Highlight. Miller made the American way since 1855. And by Oldsmobile. Oldsmobile quality. Feel it at your nearest Olds dealer. remaining in the fourth quarter and the Saints finally have some breathing room as a result of that interception by Johnny Poe first and ten on their own 45 behind Dave Wilson leading 17 to 13. There's a flag on the field. But while they figure out that, let's see if we can take a look at the interception. The ball thrown by Sims is first going to be hit by number 27 at the bottom of your screen. Number 34, the defense. Antonio Gibson, there hits the ball, but watch Ricky Jackson keep it alive. He pops it back up in the air behind him, not knowing that Johnny Poe is there, and he comes down with the interception. Pretty good teamwork. Meantime, Dan, Elvis Patterson was called for a defensive foul, number 34. Reuben Mays steps out of bounds. It's tough to see what Patterson did right there. Well, I sure didn't see anything from behind. First and 10 at the 35. First, first down this half for the Saints. Giants were looking to blitz on that play. They've been doing a lot of that, and it appears to be against the Saints. As we look at scores around the league. Encroachment on the defense. Not necessarily so. The Saints started to move back to midfield, and now they can go the other way. Well, the Giants, that time, were going to come with a blitz. They had seven or eight guys up on the line of scrimmage, and someone got too eager. If someone from New Orleans moved, he didn't get caught. That'll make it first and five at the 30, and the 10th penalty against the Giants today. It's a couple, and the tackle by Jim Burt, the nose tackle, and Andy Hedden, the linebacker. Even if the Saints don't score points on this drive, by virtue of the interception, they finally moved out of the shadow of their own end zone. And how that will come into play in the next 12 minutes certainly has to be a plus for New Orleans. Even if they turn the ball over, the Giants now are still going to have to look at going a long way for a score. And if the Saints can get into field goal range for Morton Anderson, that would give them a seven-point lead. They're already in range for him. Second and three at the 28. Kenny Hill got a hold of him. And Mays is tackled at the 26 and a half yard line. Ruben Mays, native of Saskatchewan, Canada, decided to play football instead of hockey. And he is the back on the Saints squad who really is their only legitimate big play guy. Buford Jordan, Dalton Hilliard are, are certainly durable backs, but not really, they're not the guys that every time they touch it, they've got the potential to take it all the way. Ruben Mays certainly has that, and I think that's why he's in here at this stage of the game, Dick. Third and one at the 26. Giant ball and a mix up in the back. 
field with Ruben Mays and Dave Wilson. Let's take a look at it from high above. Mays and Wilson just collide. Now they're calling it dead now. You know, there was a, some initial confusion even among the officials. Giant ball, and it was Leonard Marshall who fell on the pigskin. We'll be back. The Giants an opportunity, 11 minutes remaining in the fourth quarter, 17 to 13, in an afternoon in which Bill Parcells has really had to work to see his Giants overcome an early 17-point deficit. Haven't done it yet. Marshall will recover the fumble, and the Saints have been playing tough. And Marshall's third fumble recovery of the year. On the 28-yard line. six-yard line. A gain of 18 yards for Phil Simms. Again, the Saints come with the blitz. Alvin Tolles is going to come and get picked up. And when you bring that many guys and they're blocked, you can see on the other side, we've got Sam Mills coming as well. But look at that protection by the Giants. There's just nobody there. When you bring five, somebody's got to watch the quarterback. First and 10 at the 46. pressure on Phil Sims and Alvin Tolles a good three steps behind Mark Bavaro. No wonder why in a crucial situation Phil Sims turns repeatedly to Mark Bavaro. He seems to be open every time. He's on pace for a 1500 yard year. He's caught six for 102 today and a touchdown. First and ten at the 28 of the Saints. straight 100 yard game. It's second and 10 at the 28. Roussan. Jackson gets a hold on his feet. One thing about the Saints defense today, two players who have not played all that well this year have really risen today. Bruce Clark and Ricky Jackson. Well, we've been calling their numbers a lot. Bruce Clark, the All-American from Penn State has been a force in this game. We've seen him a couple different times wrapped around Phil Sims, making some big tackles on the running game. And a loss of a couple that time is going to... If you're Phil Sims right now, where's Mark Bavaro? Behind the lead block of Carthen and Bruce 
Toussaint, who stumbled initially, goes into a hurting, hurtling act right over the top of Alvin Tolles, and that's a fine effort. And they're going to measure to see whether Roussan has another giant first down. He almost fell down right at the line of scrimmage without anyone even around him. Short by that much. Giants threatening to take the lead for the first time. We have eight minutes and 21 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. It'll be second down and less than a yard the four. against the Chicago Bears. Two strong clubs out of the NFC Central. That's the early game. Begins with the NFL today. And the second game, Dallas and Denver. One of the best matchups in the early part of the season. The very talented Cowboys, the very, very talented Broncos at Mile High Stadium in Denver. First and 10 at the 20. Saints trailing for the first time. Intercepted by Lawrence Taylor. Make that, sorry, make that Carl Banks. But more important is you can look at Wilson's face, another knockdown. And it's Lawrence Taylor who gets credit for this knockdown. Starts upfield and then works back to the inside. And boy, he puts the shoulder on Dave Wilson just as he gets rid of the ball. George Martin in there as well. Carl Banks almost had himself an interception, but Lawrence Taylor's playing. His best game of the season. Seven unassisted tackles today. Wilson is going for Tice. And a couple of Giants almost got a hand on it. That was Taylor. And Kenny Hill as well. Taylor is everywhere this afternoon. He almost makes this pickoff. He just can hardly get to the football. Is he into the game? What do you think? It used to be if Taylor didn't make the play, it didn't get done. He's got a lot of help now, so a lot of the pressure is off of his shoulders. But he's still there. Third and ten at the 20. Four wide receivers in there. 
Jackson never had a chance. What happened to the New York Giants, I mean to the New Orleans Saints offensive line? They just disappear. Leonard Marshall's going to be the first guy in here, but look out, it's all over. Nobody even blocks Leonard Marshall. Dave Wilson has to be saying, hey, come on, guys, how about a break? Hansen will kick, and Marshall has his first full sack of the season. He had 15 and a half last year. Tony Galbraith is back for the Giants. And the kick bounces past Galbraith, who loses it. the 27 yard line what do you think bill parcells is going through this afternoon i think somebody greased the footballs before the start of the game now galbraith didn't hit it there see the official he did there and that's a free football john tice the tight end couldn't cover it up boy it was his for the taking but the giants retain possession Solomon Miller made the recovery. Tonight on CBS, you'll see an all-new edition of 60 Minutes. Parents as Pushers is a compelling story, followed by the season premiere of Murder, She Wrote. Plus, you'll see Under the Influence, starring Andy Griffith. That's all tonight on CBS. First and King Giants at the 27th. Gotten away from Dave Waymer would have been off. Tackled at the 33 yard line and a penalty mark or an injured player down. Dave Waymer is still laying. He made the tackle on Roussan and he's shaken up. Jim Mora is first time we've seen him show a lot of emotion on the sideline. Well, he sends Willie Tullis into the game. I guess he was wondering why Tullis had to be told rather than running out on his own. Busy day for Dave Waymer. He intercepted his third pass of the year, was involved in a couple of pass interference situations. The Saints, with three interceptions on the day, have 12. Came in leading the lead. Poe and Waymer each with their third today. We'll see Dave Waymer come in from the left. That's a good tackle on Lee Roussan. Didn't hit his head, though. He caught him with his right shoulder, but Dave Waymer comes off. He appears to be okay. We've talked about the Saints' interceptions today, but a key fumble by the Saints when they were in field goal range gave the Giants the ball and ultimately the drive that gave them the lead, 20-17, to 17, with seven minutes exactly remaining in the fourth quarter. Part of developing a winning attitude, which New Orleans is desperately trying to do, is, is learning how to handle a football game when it is your game. And it was the Saints game early. They had control. It was their game to win or lose. And look what they have done in the second half. Passing-wise, a minus 10 yards. So New Orleans has really gone into a shell here in the second half. They've really got no way to blame with themselves. And the Giants... As you look at their bench, their defense got aroused, and I go back to that hit by Antonio Gibson. Gibson on manual that sent him out of the game. Sims has Bavaro, who has a first down. And a penalty marker down as well, back at the line of scrimmage. Brad Benson, an excellent job of open field tackling. Let's see if we can get to the bottom of the screen. No, we're not going to get it. We've got Bavaro coming off of the line, but it's going to come back. Holding against New York. Let's get the call. Holding on the offense. Number 60. Second down will be replayed. Brad Benson again. Again. He's had a tough afternoon. I believe that's his third holding call of the day on Brad Benson. Left tackles have had a tough go of it today. Cons for New Orleans has been flagged repeatedly, and now Benson. I think we watch the open. He's going to inside move that time by James Haynes. There's Benson just dragging him to the ground. Second down and 15 at the 22-yard line. 6.15 remaining fourth quarter. Another flag. Might have been the Saints 
this time as Roussan carries. And he's tackled by Pat Swilling. And it might have been Pat Swilling that was across the ball. Swilling, a rookie from Georgia Tech, a defensive end in college, and playing down lineman on certain defenses today for the Saints. Defense, number 56, offside. Pat Swilling down. figures to be a linebacker for New Orleans. But Jim Moore told us that he likes his raw pass rushing ability. So when they go to a nickel situation, he's going to be the fourth lineman. Of course, that gives him the opportunity of either standing him up or else having him operate from a three-point stance. That's a nice luxury to have an athlete like that on your squad. And a lot of teams are going that way. Second and 10 at the 27th. Sims, wide open, Roussan. The 35 yard line, two yards shy of a first down. Brett Maxey and Johnny Poe make the tackle. Clock running, five and a half to go in the fourth quarter. Giants lead it 20 to 17. They trailed after one quarter today, 14 to nothing, and then it was 17 to nothing early in the second. And a reminder that we're seeing so much of Lee Roussan because Joe Morris is not here today experienced a blood disorder because of some medication that he took earlier in the week for his broken nose and Lee Roussan has gotten the call and I think responded very well. That he has. Third and two for the Giants. Roussan respond, responds close to a first down. We may have a measurement as they get it out to the 37. Talk about giant injuries. Lionel Manuel has a sprained knee, and he's not going to be back. And Mark Collins, the rookie cornerback who started today, suffered a concussion. He is stable condition in a New York hospital for observation. Well, Bob Frederick says we're not even going to have a measurement. He just says fourth down. Bill Parcells on the uh, other side is saying, let's take a measurement. Boy, it's pretty tough to not get a measurement when it's that close. Another conference. Yeah, he's going to call a fourth down without measurement. We'll be measured. Well, we were able to fortunately hear Bill Parcells with a few choice words. I believe that might have been Bill Sims oh, or one okay. of the other. All right, that was not Bill. But if I was Bob Fredericks, I'd turn that field mic off. And it's a first down for the Giants. That's an embarrassment. Pure and simple. Fredericks and his crew. The Redskins stay unbeaten, beating tough Seattle. First loss for the Seahawks. Roussan gets to the 40-yard line where Bruce Clark and Alvin Tolles make the tackle as the clock continues to tick. The Chicago Bears playing the Cincinnati Bengals on the road, leading big, 44-7. The, the Vikings doing the same to the Packers. And next Sunday, Dan. We'll be in Chicago as the Vikings and the Bears play at Soldier Field. The Vikings scoring 42 today. Maybe a little tougher against the Bears' defense next week. The Giants will be in St. Louis next week. Seven at the 41. Sims, quick toss, Bavaro. First down for the Giants at the 49-yard line, their own 49. Tackle by Gibson and Jackson. Again, Mark Bavaro finds an opening. Nothing glamorous about this at all. Just get the football and get a first down. Ricky Jackson slow to close on Bavaro, and Mark picks up the first down, but... 
I think you used the term warhorse a little bit earlier. I don't think of another. I don't think another word can describe it better. Six catches last week, seven today. The emergence of a superstar. First and ten at the 49. Both Giants tight ends have caught touchdown passes today. Zeke Mollard as well. Bruson into the line, and all the Giants want to do is use up that clock. We have 241 now in running. Keep in mind the Saints next week will be home at the Superdome against the unbeaten Washington Redskins. And New Orleans. A, a timeout is called with 239 remaining. Giants are trying to use up the clock and they've been successful. It's been a hard, tough game for them. This was a game they expected to win. It's been a struggle. Next week they're in St. Louis against the troubled Cardinals. Yeah, and the Cardinals have a game tomorrow night with the Dallas Cowboys, but the Giants, like you say, have held the ball. They've already had it four minutes and 37 seconds. Next week, though, it's the Cardinals. Neil Lomax. And Lomax had a great year a couple of years ago. And this man... Otis Anderson working his way well up into the charts, one of the NFL's all-time leading rushers. Their number one of a year ago, Freddie Joe Nunn, that time with the sack. The Cardinals and the Giants next week in St. Louis. And as you mentioned, the Cardinals still have a date with the Dallas Cowboys. So if this is supposed to be the soft part of the Giants' schedule coming up with the Saints, Cardinals, and then the Philadelphia Eagles, no one has told Bill Parcell. Or the Saints. This is still a ball game. First down for Sims and the Giants. You think this is a good fake? Watch James Haynes flow down the line of scrimmage and watch his reaction when he realizes that Phil Sims has the football. Whoa! <laughs> what a fake by Phil Sims and what a daring call. <laughs> James Haynes has to go back for his shoes. The Saints have called another timeout, leaving them with one. Phil Sims on a 14-yard run. He earlier had an 18-yard run in this fourth quarter. So he has to be trying to catch his breath on the sideline with everything right now on the Giants' side. And while we have a moment want to clarify next week's telecast in New York the Giants and Cardinal game at Bush Stadium will be shown to the New York audience it all starts with the NFL today and that will be the only game that the New York viewers will see two minutes and 30 seconds left in this game Bill Sims with that bootleg Catching James Haynes to the inside. Boy, that is really, uh, that is really a, just an excellent call. I really admire a call like that. And winning teams sometimes do plays like that and execute plays like that in the punch. Sims gaining 30 yards today. And that's what he's done through the air. By the way, the Redskins, with their victory, makes this game for the Giants really critical because the Giants don't want to fall two games behind Washington in the Eastern Division race. up a lot of time with that kind of running. Gibson and Ricky Jackson on the tackle. And the clock stops with 218 showing. Gibson and Jackson. Did New Orleans take a timeout? If they did, they're out of timeouts. They're out of them. Boy, now that, I'm sorry, Dick, but that is a, uh, you know, that is really a decision that requires a little thought. All you're gaining is 18 seconds. The clock would have stopped at 18 seconds. It's a two-minute warning, and 
should New Orleans get the, back, uh, the ball back offensively to have no timeouts at all? I, I might have been tempted to keep that one in the bank. you got to have one because if the Giants get a field goal, the Saints still have a chance to win it with a touchdown. And so when they get the ball back, even if the Giants were to be held to a field goal, the Saints would need that one timeout to help them. But now with none left, that puts them in a big hole. I'll tell you what else it does with no timeouts remaining. After the two-minute warning, one giant first down is just about the end of the game. Well, CBS Sports coverage of the America's Polo Championship featuring Argentina, which is a perennial power against an all-star North American squad, will be coming up following the game later today. And preceding that, NFL Today post-game show with scores and highlights and an update on our instant replay poll. Second and four for the Giants on the scene, 31. The Giants leading 20 to 17. Broussard trying to spin away, gets to the 29. Bruce Clark and Tony Elliott make the tackle. The Saints have played an outstanding game. And Clark in particular. And we're going to wind down to our two-minute warning here at Giant Stadium. Two SFL stars to two titles in the last one. One here at Giant Stadium. Never has lost two in a row as a head coach, but that's how much time remains, and he is out of timeout. Third and two for the Giants on the 29. We've had our two-minute warning. the first down yardage had to get to the 27 Frank Watlett and Sam Mills were in on the tackle and a first down and Bill Parcells feels this one is history well that's quite simply because New Orleans right there as you see they've got no timeouts remaining and Lawrence Taylor what a game he's played today, and you have to admire the Saints for the start of today's ball game, but got awful conservative in half number two. One first down in the second half, that by penalty after nine first downs in the opening half. And the Giants will just let the clock run down. Well, you've heard of playing hurt. Well, how about winning rough? After last Sunday's victory against the Raiders, Bill Parcells nearly mugged those tackle Jim Burt. He's going to grab Burt from behind, and Burt's helmet is going to come down over his nose. My reaction when it happened was normally it would have been a swing, <laughs> but I was so tired that I couldn't swing, but uh, I'm glad I did now as coach, so I'd have gotten a lot of trouble. <laughs> he may be more conservative this time, Parcells. That may be the last play. But we have a penalty marker down, so it won't be, with 28 seconds showing. Tough road for the Giants today. They trailed 17 to nothing, but they coolly came back. And a big fumble by the Saints when they could have gotten a field goal, perhaps. Illegal procedure on the defense. Five-yard penalty. And the Giant drive paid off in a touchdown pass. Sims to Moat, and that put them in the lead for good. A very odd football game, though. A game that there was really no rhythm. There was no, no continuity to this game at all. We'd see two or three good plays, then a, then a penalty, a, a muffed ball. A, a very, very abstract football game. Tough to get a handle on. But the good teams win these kind of games. That's an excellent penalty point. penalty will be declined, and by rule, with less than 30 seconds to go, the game will end. Penalty on the defense inside the 30-second clock. Bob Fredericks telling the players it's over and they don't want to leave. They want to stay out no. there. And now they start the clock. But they've reset the 30-second clock so New York doesn't have to run a play. Coming up, we have more. 
The NFL Today wrap-up show. The Giants held the ball the last seven minutes and 16 seconds and had to come from behind today to beat the New Orleans Saints for their third consecutive win. 20-17, to 17, the Saints fall to 1-3. And, and Lee Roussan gained 71 yards in 24 carries in his first regular season NFL start for the ailing Joe Morris. The Giants played most of the game without Lionel Manuel. Mark Collins, the rookie, suffered a concussion. But it was a gritty Giant victory against the team, the Saints, that looked a lot better than their record and their status coming in there. And in the second half, I think we really have to credit the New York Giants and their defensive football team. When you limit anyone in the National Football League to zero first downs, New Orleans, granted, had one first down, but it was by penalty. So by rights, they held them to no first downs in an entire half of football. That is simply superb defensive play. And a couple of heroes, Raul Allegre, with two field goals in his debut, and Mark Bavaro, who went over 100 yards for the third time this season and caught a touchdown pass. So did Zeke Moat. What a great comeback. This game meant symbolically for Zeke Moat. And of course, we've heard about William Andrews, but Zeke Moat, we'll be right back. Well, welcome. Those of you who watched the New York Giants come from behind, that was as good a comeback as we had today. They trailed the New Orleans Saints by 17 points, and then the Giants came roaring back. Two touchdown passes by Phil Simms, and it is 20 to 17. So those of you who just joined us, how about a quick recap on the scores? We've had a couple of finals that perhaps you're not aware of. Washington Redskins, 19-14 over Seattle, and for the Redskins, they run that record to 4-0. and And Steve Largen did tie Harold Carmichael's reception record today with Seattle, 127 straight games with a catch in that one. For Philadelphia, this was the stunner. It is now final. The Eagles under Buddy Ryan have done it. What has Buddy Ryan got on John Robinson when he was defensive coordinator with the Bears? He shut down Eric Dickerson in the NFC Championship, and he did it again today. 34-20, Steve Bartkowski injured for the Rams that game. Looking at the replay, and I don't want to speculate. I haven't heard from a doctor, but looking at the replay, that could be a very serious knee injury. It could have been ligaments. He really took a slam down low. Cleveland and Detroit, many of you folks watched this one. The Browns holding on. Three touchdown passes by Eric Hippel in that game, 24-21 our final score. Minnesota, six touchdown passes by one Tommy Kramer, 42-7, and now as Will McDonough just told you, the Vikings will play the Chicago Bears twice in the next three weeks with San Francisco sandwiched in between. Doesn't get easy, does it? San Francisco goes down into the Orange Bowl, and it's 31-16 in the late going. They have intercepted Dan Marino four times in that game, and the last one they took in for a touchdown. This is the same Dan Marino who came to the Meadowlands last week and lit up the New York Jets in that great game that they had over there, which was won by the Jets in overtime. They have taken Marino out, Irv Cross, and they have gone with Don Strzok. I don't know. What about Don Shula's defense? Well, that's a really big question mark. They've given up 51 points two weeks in a row. Now here the San Francisco 49ers moving the ball on them. And Shula, of course, is a defensive specialist. Uh, frankly, I don't know what's happened to that defense, Brent, but uh, if anybody can fix it, Shula can. All right. Well, we've got three of the audiences with us right now, and we're going to pick up the Philadelphia Eagle Los Angeles Ram audience. They'll be joining us here in momentarily, and we will pause while that team also links up with us. Well, welcome those of you who watched Buddy Ryan's defense do it. I'm sure out in Los Angeles there is nothing but disappointment and also a lot of concern about Steve Bartkowski and his physical condition. There were several shots on the sideline of Jim Everett. He's the rookie out of Purdue whom the Rams acquired from Houston. Not yet ready to step into that lineup, but he may get force-fed soon. Now with the Rams losing, of course, the Atlanta Falcons, they have to pick it up now. They're taking on Tampa Bay. The Buccaneers struck first in that game, incidentally, and they lead Atlanta by a field goal down there. Now, because we have this new audience with us, let's continue along with the scoreboard. 2017, it was Kansas City over Buffalo in that game. Todd Blackledge threw the winning touchdown pass to Paul Kaufman. And you've got to ask yourself, why was Kaufman turned loose by the Green Bay Packers? Pittsburgh and Houston, 16-13. But the Oilers are now driving. They are down to the Steelers' six-yard line late in the fourth quarter. This has been a dandy. Pittsburgh 
York fighting for its life in that one. Chicago and Cincinnati, it's a different bear team whenever Jim McMahon steps in at quarterback. He threw a couple of touchdown passes, in fact, making it three for the afternoon, and the bear defense intercepted Boomer Esiason four times in that one. Now, these games are underway. The Jets have kicked a field goal against the Colts in the first quarter. New England and Denver, the Broncos are up by a field goal in the first quarter. San Diego and the Raiders, the Chargers scored on a Dan Fouts pass, but they missed the extra point. Mark Wilson is playing quarterback for the Raiders, and he has been intercepted one time in that game. Atlanta, Tampa Bay, and again checking that one, the Buccaneers with an early field goal on the unbeaten Falcons, and they lead it by a score of three to nothing. Let me take the Ram fans and the Eagle fans back to the top here and show you. The Giants came back. They trailed in this game by 17 points, and they win it 20 to 17. Washington is now 4 and 0 with a 1914 win. In that game, Steve Cox kicked a 57-yard field goal. That's the longest field goal we've had this year, and that is the longest in Washington Redskin history. The Philadelphia Eagles, with the big upset, 34-20 over the Los Angeles Rams. Ron Jaworski, incidentally, we talked about Barkowski, but Jaworski also suffered a concussion, and we hope that is not a serious injury. Cleveland and.